All right, good morning. So here we are for yet another lovely session of MENG 3310 Fluid Mechanics. And this is going to be the 17th lecture in the series. It's recorded on February 22nd, 2017. And this will be the only lecture for the week. I will be out on Wednesday and Thursday at the uh, UT, at the actual ASCE um, Steel Bridge and Concrete Canoe Competition this year in El Paso, or the of the Texas-Mexico Regionals. So anyway, let's begin. And I'm the faculty sponsor for the bridge team, so I should be out there. So, okay, let us look at a example problem. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, or sorry, I should I should summarize. In the previous lesson or the previous lecture, we looked at finding, um, looked at applying conservation of linear momentum to control volumes. So we worked through the equations of conservation of linear momentum. We looked at the general equation. We broke it down into pieces. We looked at uh, what types of external forces can act upon a control volume. And so that the, the previous lesson was more of, of a theory-based lesson. And today I want to look more at applied examples. So this, is, so this could probably be called, summarized as, uh, if I were to title this, I might title it something like Conservation of Linear Momentum Examples. So here, let's work through an example. Actually, let's be working through several examples today. Example. All right, so let us say we have a nozzle and an anchor. So I'm going to have a nozzle and an anchor. So this thing is rigidly attached to an anchor, and then I'll draw the nozzle. I'll draw the anchor first and then the nozzle. And this nozzle will be simultaneously changing in angle and diameter. So that's not just my poor, that's not just my poor art skills. I actually do have a change in both angle and diameter going on here. So the flow is, is starting out going vertically, and at the end it will be going at a certain angle. And then it will also have a, uh, a change in diameter, which we will use, uh, which we will be using. So let me try to draw this here. So this is an anchor. This is an anchor. And we have a flow rate here. Coming in, we'll have a flow rate. So all of this is given. And we'll have a flow coming in a Q of, this is going to be 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. And coming out, we will have a V, velocity V, just some velocity V. And I will tell us that we have a, an angle here of 30 degrees. This velocity is coming out with the, an angle to respect, with respect to the horizontal of 30 degrees. 30 degrees here. Now, um, the cross-sectional area of each, the cross-sectional area of this, is going to be 0 0.02. 0 0.02. And the cross-sectional area here is going to be, oh, and I should probably give you a, what that is, 0 0.02 what, and it's going to be meters squared, uh, just meters squared. And this one up here will be uh, 0 0.01. Oh, excuse me. Thank goodness we have the mute button. And the area is 0 0.01 uh, square meters up here. Now I'll also tell you the pressures coming in and out here. And the pressure here is going to, at the uh, entrance here, is going to be 40 kilopascals, 40 kPa. And the pressure here will be zero. It's like, and again, this is not venting into vacuum. That would be weird, but I suppose we could do that. We could have this in a vacuum chamber or something. But no, this is a gauge pressure, which is why this is going to be zero. Both of our pressures here are gauge. So this is 40 kilopascals gauge pressure. This one here, RP, is zero uh, kilopascals or whatever we would like, etc. And I'll also tell us that the uh, weight of the nozzle itself, so this thing has some weight, this physical object, and the weight of this nozzle is going to be 200 newtons. And then the volume, the volume of all the, uh, of the, the nozzle itself, the, the interior volume, is going to be uh, 0 0.02 cubic meters. Now, I'm not telling us anything about the dimensions, so we won't look at anything in the horizontal direction. 
But what I want to do is I, so all of this is given, and then I'm going to give us a task, and we're going to find the vertical anchor force. Find the vertical anchor force. <coughs> the vertical anchor force. So there's going to be fluid <laughs> leaving this way, which means there's going to be a um, a force that's going to. So if this fluid is being accelerated, or going flying out this way, we know that, right? There's fluid going out this way, and then that in turn there that means that this uh, that there that there must be a um, force exerted on the nozzle here. But then we also have pressure here. And so this can be get it, this can get very thorny very quickly, and the way that we're going to then the way we're going to solve this is by setting up a control volume. So all this is given, and I'm going to start working through it on the next slide. So again, we have a nozzle. It's going to be connect, so this here is the nozzle, and then we have a big anchor block that's going to hold this thing into place, and then we're going to have a. Uh, I want us to calculate the vertical anchor force required to keep this thing in place. All right, so solution, let's work through the steps. Solution, let's work through this. And I'll list a series of steps. My first step is going to be to set up a control volume and draw a free body diagram. Set up a control volume and a free body diagram. And usually I'll just draw them the same, uh, on the same diagram. And free body diagram. So I will draw the anchor, and then show the forces acting on it, and also I'll clearly label my control volume. Here. And I'm going to have points 1 and 2 here, and here, 1 and 2. Now, let's see. I'm going to define my control volume as the inner surface of this um, thing here, as the inner surface of the um, nozzle, as the inner surface of the nozzle. Or actually, I might, uh, because I was given the weight of the uh, nozzle itself, I think I'm going to define it as just outside the uh, just outside the skin of the nozzle here. If I drew it just inside, I would be tempted to sort of include uh, to exclude the weight of that. But I, because I am including the weight of the nozzle, I'm going to include that in my analysis. I want to define my control volume like so. So this is going to be the control volume, or the control surface, whatever you want to refer to it as. The control volume enclosed in the control surface. And uh, then if I look on this, okay, so. Um, on this control volume, there's going to be a few forces. The, there's going to be a force of the anchor, which I'm going to assume is acting downward. Because there's going to be an enormous pressure force exerted upward by the fluid here. So I'm going to just assume that the force of the anchor is acting downward. You can assume either one. It doesn't really, just like in most problems in, say, statics, it doesn't really matter what direction you assume. If you get a negative number, you just know it's going the other direction. So I'm going to assume the anchor force is going downward. And then, or you could just as well assume it's going upward, but I think the way I have it written here, I have it written as uh, downward, so I'm going to work through that. And then I have the force of pressure at point 1. It's just going to be equal to the area at 1 times the pressure at 1. So this fluid, the fluid that's under pressure at point 1, is going to be exerting a force on the control volume. Then I will also have a couple of forces, the weight of the nozzle, the weight of the nozzle itself, and the weight of the um, control volume fluid. So the weight of the water in the control volume. You can't read, I know that's kind of, I should, probably should use a different color here, but that is weight CV da, uh, comma fluid. The weight of the control volume in the fluid. So we have our four forces. Now, you may note that we, uh, uh, and I will also draw show, something showing that we have a velocity here velocity here. Now, you may note that, uh, as, no, so you may remember that I said, hey, wait, won't the, um, won't this exert a force on here? 
And the answer is yes, it will. The fluid will exert a backwards force, but that's going to be taken into account with our exchange of momentum. Um, we will be working through a conservation momentum problem, but uh, that whenever we have a stream of fluid, a velocity, we consider we look at that from a momentum approach. We don't look at it purely from a force approach. The only thing that we include in our forces are the forces of the anchor, pressure forces, weight of the fluid inside the control volume, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's our full free body diagram. Now, uh, you might notice that this could be a bit... Um, you, or if you're looking at this, if, if you're looking at this a little closely, you might be wondering, um, well, we don't know exactly where these things are. I didn't tell you the exact dimensions of the control volume. I didn't tell the exact dimensions of the nozzle or anything like that. So I don't know the exact size of this thing. And so clearly, though, these are not all aligned vertically to, towards each other. So there would also be some sort of moment generated. This, this support would have to resist both a, um, mainly, a, mainly a vertical force, but it would also have to resist some sort of moment. And uh, so if we wanted to find that, we could, but we'd have to know no more information. We'd have to know the actual, uh, really the center of gravity of the nozzle. If we knew the, ce the uh, center of gravity of the weight of the nozzle and the center of gravity of the fluid inside the nozzle, then we could actually calculate a moment that is being exerted on this. We basically, we need to know a lot more about the geometry of the nozzle. But barring that, since all we're, asking for, all we're asked for is the vertical force, we don't need to worry about any kind of moments here. But if I were actually designing this in reality, if I was actually a design engineer building one of these things, I would definitely want to worry about that moment. See, if you think about it, this, say like, okay, if I have something like this here pulling, maybe it's going to rotate this way or something, so this end might actually be being pulled up and this one might be pushed down, so maybe I would need more tension connectors here, or this is the kind of stuff you'd have to deal with if you were designing this thing in real life. But this is basic class, so I'll just keep it simple. Okay. So I'm going to consider a, uh, I'm going to set up the equation, our conservation momentum equation, and actually maybe I'll do that on the next slide. Um, so I'll have a little more room. Step two is going to be to set up our uh, conservation momentum equation of linear momentum equation. conservation of linear momentum equation, which, uh, as we saw previously, this equation can be quite long, but uh, at least in cases where the control volume isn't deforming, it can collapse down to the sum of forces is equal to Q2 uh, P2, or Q2 Rho2, Q2 Rho2 V2 vector minus Q1 Rho1 v1 vector. And then since we're only worried about the vertical force, this would apply to both the x and y components, but since we only want the vertical force, I will look at only the x or I will look at only the y components of these things. Since we only want vertical force, since we only want the vertical force, the sum of forces in the y direction will be equal to Q2 rho2 um, v2y minus Q1 rho1 Q1 rho1 Q1 rho1 v1y and notice again uh, when we're finding the the velocity, uh, this, this velocity here is going to be a vector, so we're actually going to consider just the x or y components. But the flow rate here, we're, go is, we're going to use the entire flow rate, and we, we discussed that at length in the previous lesson. Okay, so uh, I know that rho in, or sorry, q in is going to equal q, uh, is going to equal q out, so q1 must equal q2. q1 has to equal q2, assuming this is steady state, etc. And then I can collapse this, or not collapse it, more expand this actually. The forces, if I look at the forces on here, I would have F, um, FP1, FP1 minus, oh, let's see, weight of the fluid, minus weight of the nozzle, 
minus uh, force at A. So again, we should have, if we go back here, we should have um, actually, uh, oh, sorry, I got this one in the wrong direction. No, that was, that was bothering me. That's not right. This, uh, this one should be going in the vertical direction. Sorry about that. The pressure is going to be, it's a pressure will always be outward or inward on a control volume. So sorry about that. Uh, so the pressure is going to be the only positive force, and all the other three will be uh, negative. And then this will equal Q2, uh, Q2 rho 2, uh, V2 y, minus Q1 rho 1, V1 y. Now, um, the, and that's, those are both subscripts, V1 y. So these are the forces, the, the pressure force at, uh, on basically at point one, which will equal the pressure times the area, minus the weight of the fluid at one, or minus the weight of the fluid in the nozzle, m minus the weight of the nozzle itself, minus the anchoring force, will be equal to uh, the Q, the, flow, the water flowing through the, uh, flowing flu, great, flowing through the, uh, uh, flowing through the nozzle at point two, or flowing out of the nozzle, the density at two, and the vertical component of the velocity at two, minus Q1 rho one V1Y, which so, um, all of that should hopefully be very clear now. Or not so clear as much. So uh, now we can just plug things in and simplify. So let's do a little plugging in and simplifying. Here. Uh, so let's see. Actually, I can probably do. Oh, what did I do? That's not right. Uh, let's go back here. Okay. getting a little lost here. Now, um, I can say this here, P1A, or sorry, the pressure force, is going to be P1, that's pressure one, times area one, I'm gonna try not to make my rows and P's look too much like each other, minus 200 newtons, minus uh, the weight of the nozzle. Oh, let's see, actually, you know what, I think I'm going to I think I got those a little backwards. I want to keep this consistent. So let's say 9,800 for the weight of the fluid, minus 9,800 kilonewtons per cubic meter for the, for the gamma of water, uh, times 0 0.012 cubic meters, that's the volume of the nozzle, minus the weight of the nozzle itself, which will be 200 newtons, minus the anchoring force a day, which is what we're after, and then all of this is equal to the uh, the flows. So this is going to be, or the momentums, momentum flow rate, 0 0.1 cubic meter per second times, let's use a density of 999, or you could just use 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, kilograms per cubic meter times V2Y minus 0 0.1 kilograms per cubic meter, oh, not kilograms per cubic meter, sorry, uh, meters per second, cubic meters per second, uh, minus 0 0.1 cubic meters per second, times the density, it's water, so it's generally incompressible, 999 kilograms per cubic meter, times V1Y, and close bracket. So we have one long equation here. We have the pressure force, which is P1A1, minus the weight of the fluid, which is going to be at its, uh, its gamma, its specific weight, times the volume of the fluid in the nozzle, minus the weight of the nozzle, minus the, uh, the anchoring force at A, and then all of this will equal, to all this is equal essentially to the momentum flow. We have a, um, the, uh, this is Q1, uh, rho 1, sorry, Q2, V2, Q2, rho 2, V2, minus uh, Q1, rho 1, uh, V1, all in the y direction. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so um, we have this, the main equation set up properly, there's just, one pro there's just one issue. And that issue, of course, is that we, well, I do know pressure, so I, I, that's not an unknown, but unfortunately, I, as I have it written here, I have one equation and three unknowns. And this one here, I could also point out this is, 40,000 uh, newtons per meter squared 
times 0 0.02 square meters. But we have a problem, and that problem is we have, so these are both known, but I have unknowns, let me mark these in orange maybe. My unknowns are FA, V2Y, and V1Y. I have three unknowns and one equation. What do we do? Do we give up and go home? Don't tell me yes. You only have one class this week. You can get through it. <laughs> you can get through this. We'll all get through this. It's okay. We'll, we'll get through it. So don't, don't need, we need a good, good positive attitude. We can do this. And what we need is we need other equations. And, and uh, thankfully, this isn't that difficult because at, if I go back here, I know the flow rate here and the flow rate here. So this is going to be point 0.1, this is point 0.2. In fact, maybe I'll just label that 1 and 2 through my whole analysis. But um, again, I know the flow rate here, I know the flow rate here. I know the diameter or the area here and the area here. And if I have the flow rate and the area, I can find the velocity. And since I know that the, ang the angle that these things are at, I know this is vertical, so my theta is 90 degrees. I know this one is at an angle of 30 degrees. I can find the vertical component. I can find the vertical component of velocity for each of them. So let's get v2y and v1y. v2y and v1y. Well, this is going to be equal to the sine of 30 degrees. Just our old friend, uh, components of forces, times 0 0.1 cubic meters per second, divided by 0 0.01 meters squared. And this is going to be equal to 5 meters per second. Ah, something interesting today. And this is going to be equal the, uh, will equal the sine of 90 degrees, times uh, 0 0.1 cubic meters per second divided by 0 0.02 meters squared. An area of 0 0.02 meters squared. And hey, what do you know? This comes to 5 meters per second. <clears throat> so in this particular example, they are the same. The vertical velocities here are actually the same exact thing. So let's continue to let's finish this up. So all of those other forces that I had on the left side of the equation, these are just going to collapse to 482.4 uh, newtons minus PA, the, the reaction force at A, uh, minus PA, yes, minus, actually let me say, let me say FA, sorry, PA on my notes, that's not right, let's say FA equals 0 0.1 cubic meters per second times 999 kilograms per cubic meter times 999 kilograms per cubic meter times 5 meters per second minus 5 meters per second. So what do you know? This whole right side of the equation actually just completely collapses. So this is zero, so the whole thing just disappears in the poof of logic. Just gone, finito, null, zero. Never was. And so then finally, Fa will be equal to 482.4 newtons. And that would be an O oh, downward. We did get a positive number, so that means we assumed um, the correct direction to begin with. So Fa is equal to 482.4 newtons downward. All right, and I have one other example I want to work through, which is a similar idea, similar type of problem. And this, and this one will be from the text. Except the difference here is that this one I will actually be considering forces in both the x and y directions, both the horizontal and the vertical direction. All right, so example two, this is going to be text example 5.38 from the Munson text. So text 
example 5.38 if you don't feel like drawing out the whole diagram, but I will here for completion's sake. If I can manage how to write the number 5. 5.38, okay. So this one will be using English units. And we have kind of a uh, another pipe that is bend that is uh, bending about and also decreasing in diameter. Mm, it, it starts out horizontal, but then it comes around at a kind of weird angle, and the diameter does decrease as we go along. So again, that's not just my poor, poor art skills. I actually intended to draw it that way. But I will uh, label the areas so we don't get confused. Or so I don't get confused. I confuse myself sometimes, as you know, you sometimes see. To errors, human, etc., etc. Okay, so we have a flow right here that's going to be coming in. And let's see. Here, let's see what we can figure out. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a flow rate Q here, and area 1 is going to be, actually maybe I'll label it in green, I like doing that. Area 1 is 0 0.2 square feet, and area 2 is 0 0.1 square feet. 0 0.1 uh, square feet here, uh, 0 0.1 square feet, and actually we're not going to be, uh, okay, let me show you here. So this, let me just label everything that's given and then I'll talk about it. So given here, and I'm also told the pressure at point 0.1, so I have a pressure gauge here, and the P is equal to 10 PSI. Now, I am going to make things a little bit more difficult by saying, you know what? I am not going to give you either the flow rate or the velocity. Dun, dun, dun. And without any further information, this problem would be unsolvable. If I didn't know one of those or another piece of information, I would not be able to solve this. However, I will give us another piece of information, and that, that is that we have a horizontal force, well there's going to be a horizontal and vertical anchoring force, and the horizontal anchoring force is going to the left, and it, we, we know that F, I'm just going to call this FAX, is equal to 1,440 pounds, and the vertical anchoring force is unknown. This is one of the things we're solving for. So FAY, and then I want to find, so all this is given, All of this is given, and find, so our old friends, given and find, given and find, will be Q and FAY. I want to know the, the anchoring force in the vertical direction, and I want to know the flow rate. Oh, and I also have one other piece of information I'm given, which will be crucial, and that is the angle at point two. This is a simply a 45 degree angle. This is simply 45 degrees. Okay, so the first step again is to establish a control volume. And I'll just, I don't want to, uh, for time's sake, I don't want to redraw the entire diagram. But one is to uh, establish control volume. And I'm just going to briefly sketch it up top. Establish the control volume. And I'm just going to let the control volume be the inner surface of our elbow here. Now we weren't given anything, any information about the weight of or volume of the um, of the <coughs> nozzle here or the bend here. So without further information, I'm going to just assume that the weight of both the nozzle and the fluid inside the nozzle is negligible compared to the other forces involved. So it's going to be, it would definitely be off by a tiny percent, but, uh, you know, if you have a, it really, it's a relative thing. If you're, if the size of your pressure and, and momentum forces 
are much, 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 much greater than the weight of the fluid actually inside the nozzle and the weight of the nozzle itself, well, then it's not going to matter. But uh, in the previous problem, it definitely wasn't. The vertical velocities actually canceled out. So, the, sorry, the vertical momentum flows actually canceled out. So in that case, I would need to um, the I needed to know the weight of the nozzle, et cetera. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and assume uh, because it's not because not, no information was given. I'm going to assume that the uh, weight of the nozzle and the fluid inside the control volume is neg is negligible compared to the other forces involved. So obviously, it can't be zero. There is some weight in this thing. The the thing has to weigh something. But we can say okay, maybe the forces in there, the the weight forces, maybe that's I don't know, a fraction of 1% of the pressure forces or something like that. And this is, I also mentioned that this is venting into the atmosphere. So the pressure here is zero, it's a gauge pressure. So this is, we have a velocity here, V2, but then um, V2 here, but this thing is going to be a pressure of zero, it's just a gauge pressure. So I also say that here, P is zero gauge. It's just venting to the atmosphere. Okay. So next I need to, my second step will be to do my balance of momentum equation. So to write an equation. And again, it comes down to the sum of forces in the x direction. I'll look at the x direction first. And the reason I'm choosing the x direction first is I already know the forces, the, x, the anchoring force in the x direction, so I want to maybe use that to solve for the flow rate. So summation of forces, that's going to be, um, by doing that, that's going to prevent me from having to solve a system of equations. So summation of forces in the x direction will be equal to um, Q rho, Q rho Vx for 2 at point 2 minus Q rho Vx for one. And then the summation of forces in the x direction, uh, notice here, this thing is going to be, in case it's not obvious, there's a pressure here. So that means is this probably is continuing, the pipe would probably continue much further along here. And because of that, there's going to be a pressure force exerted on this boundary of the fluid. There will not be one here because it's just venting to the atmosphere. So, um, and then the sum of forces in the x direction will be P1A1 minus FAX, which is then equal to the same Q uh, rho VX, VX for 2 minus Q rho VX for 1. And now I can say that V2X, so based upon this, what can I figure out? Well, Let's see here. Now I know the flow rates are going to be the same, so but let's let's actually look at the. I want to get a, a different expression for velocities. Uh, something in terms of Q. So v two x and v two or v one x. This is going to be equal to. This will be equal to negative Q two negative Q2 divided by 0 0.1 square feet times the cosine of 45 degrees. And the 1x will be equal to Q1, so this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative, just based on the direction they're going, uh, Q1 over 0 0.2 square feet. And so do, do pay attention that we, we do need to be very mindful of our positives and negatives here. This is, at V2, the x direction, the, fl the f uh, flow is moving to the left. At 1, it's moving to the right. So that's why this one is positive and this one is negative. Now, another piece of information is the Qs. So we do not really have a Q1 and a Q2. We have Q1 equals Q2, which is simply equal to Q. So if I could, I could then simplify and solve by plugging these into this, and I could do, okay, let's see here, 10 PSI, I'm going to write the thing out, but then for, but for time's sake, I'll just jump right to the solution once I have it in a, uh, in a fully worked out um, problem, or a fully worked out equation, and then it's just algebra from there. 144 inches squared 
For feet squared, that is a unit conversion. Do make sure, like in all of our problems, please watch out for units. Uh, times 0 0.2 square feet minus the anchoring force in the x direction, which is 1,440 pounds. And then this is going to be equal to uh, Q2, or just Q squared, I should say, times the density of 1.94 slugs per cubic feet, density of water, slugs per cubic feet, times a very interesting um, thing, very interesting combination. I'm just going to take these, this here, so the negative times the quantity, so this is not an x, this is just a t multiplication, times negative cosine of 45 degrees divided by 0 0.1 square feet plus 1 over 0 0.2 feet squared. And so now, I mean, yes, this is a bit of a hairy equation, but solving through it really isn't that dis difficult. This is just an algebra problem now. And so <coughs> the only unknown is Q2. And if you go through and solve for all of that and multiply correctly and work through everything else, you will find that the flow rate Q, which is the first thing that we want to know, the first of our desired quantities, is 7.01 cubic feet per second, CFS. So that is our first uh, desired quantity here. And we're not quite done. We still have to um, solve for the um, vertical anchoring force. But thankfully, this one isn't too bad. This one's going to be a lot simpler than the other one. So that's sort of uh, A here. And then B, I want to find FAY. <coughs> find FAY the vertical anchoring force at point A in the, uh, the, the, verti the anchoring force in A, or at A, in the vertical direction. So doing the same kind of balance of forces and momentums, I get FAY is equal to V2 times the sine of 45 degrees uh, times rho Q is equal to Q over A2 times the sine of 45 degrees and the sine of 45 degrees times rho q. Times rho q. And notice we don't have, you might be asking, what about, wait, 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 where's the other one? Where's the, this is obviously the one at point two, where's a one? Well, the reason is we don't have one. It's, uh, or in other words, the sine is going to be zero. This is at, if you look at, if you look at the diagram at point one, the pipe is perfectly horizontal. So there is no angle there to consider. Uh, so, or I could solve this and say, okay, um, here, basically I started with V2 sine 45 rho Q, and then I changed uh, V2 into Q over A2, or I could say this as FAY equals Q2, or Q squared, this Q and this Q, over A2 times rho times the sine of 45 degrees, so close. FAY is equal to 7.01, taking the Q I got from earlier, cubic feet per second, quantity squared, divided by the area at point 2, which is 0 0.01 square feet, times the sine of 45 degrees, times density of 1.94 slugs per cubic feet, slugs per cubic feet, uh, times, then I need to do a bit of a unit conversion to do one pound second squared divided by slug feet to make the units work out, to go from pounds to slugs to pounds, basically, uh, slug feet. And if we do this, then everything should kind of work out together. If you run through this, what we will find, if you cancel out all the units and multiply everything together, you will get that FAY is equal to 674 pounds. And that is the second desired quantity. This is the vertical force, or this is the, an the anchoring force, that is, or the force that is required to keep this thing from moving um, downward. So if we think about this, this is actually an anchoring force, an upward anchoring force. 
So this means is this thing actually would like to move downward. So it would like to move downward, but there's a anchoring force that's going to keep it from um, moving uh, downward. Uh, we're simply not going to allow it to move that way. All right, so I think that will do it for today. Um, oh wait, no, I'm a liar. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm that stupid. Um, sorry. No, um, I was looking purely at the, the, the magnitudes. Okay, we assumed that this is going to be uh, downward. So that actually, I was look looking at that like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't pass the smell test. See, this thing is, the fluid is flowing out downward, which means this thing should tend to go rocketing upward if it wasn't uh, held in place by some other force. So, never mind, in this case, the positive force, the positive anchoring force does not mean that the anchoring force is upward, it just means that we, I, I, we, I got caught in one of those classic uh, problems of which direction is it going. If we get a positive value, of course, it's going not necessarily vertically upward, but only in the direction that we assumed. So. We assume it's going downward, we got a positive number, it is indeed going downward. So let me just go ahead and summarize that here, make it very clear. Uh, 674 pounds downward. And that will make a little more sense. So hopefully that doesn't confuse anybody any more than we already have. Okay, so that will do it for today. I will see you again next Monday. Uh, if you have any questions, feel you can see me during office hours on Monday and Tuesday. And as always, thank you.